Welcome on into the Wolverine.com podcast. Clayton Safey with Anthony Broom here. Chris Ballas is out for the day uh, from the podcast. And uh, Anthony, um, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll turn it to you in just a second because you were just traveling the world. Uh, but uh, make sure if you're watching on YouTube, uh, we appreciate everybody. Please like the video. That will help us out and hit the subscribe button on the channel. You can become one of our many, many subscribers on there. Uh, Also, give us a five-star rating on uh, whatever podcast platform you're listening to, if you're listening after the fact. Uh, And join us at thewolverine.com. $29.99 gets you access on the message board to all of our premium articles, all of that good stuff, Michigan football, basketball, and recruiting through August 31, 2023. So go and do that right now. Uh, Anthony, you're back. Welcome back. I am back. Uh, after traveling the world uh, in the last few days, I spent portions of time in France, Japan, uh, uh, Germany, Norway, and Mexico. I was at Epcot, actually. Uh, I was I was down uh, in the uh, the most magical, happiest place on earth for a few days. Nice to get away for a bit, uh, sunshine, all that stuff, and. Uh, yeah, it seems like <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I was at one of the parks on Sunday, um, and I, you know, check. I was checking my phone during the. I w- the intent was to check my phone during the Michigan basketball game because uh, I wasn't working it. Didn't really have a way to watch it, but I was going to watch uh, during the. Uh, you know, just while like standing in line and watch the the team stream or whatever whatever you use for that. And I think at one point they were down like three or four points, and I was like, okay, well, look at that. Jet Howard's back and he's going off, and then. Um, got on a ride, came off the ride, and they're down 30 to Penn State. And that just kind of like further put a stamp on the idea that I was going to unplug from all things Michigan for a few days. Uh, I know there was a bit of a, uh, I won't even say a scare, just more of a, just more of Mike Florio, Mike Florioing. Uh, but other than that, it doesn't really feel like I missed a whole lot. I know we're in the midst of, Spring uh, or uh, winter conditioning for football, basketball, as we record here on a Thursday morning, uh, plays. I I mean, they have to have all of them at this point. Uh, So they're all must wins uh, for this basketball team moving forward. If we're going to even have any type of postseason conversation. And uh, yeah, so good few days. Uh, Good to be back, though. You know, the truth, like. I was kind of like you get to the last day of the trip and you're like, all right, you know what? I think I'm kind of ready to get back to work now. And I think that's when you can, um, that's when you can kind of tell that the batteries have been recharged. So full, uh, full speed or nothing here moving forward. For sure. Yeah. No, glad to hear it. Um, I was going to say, while you were gone in uh, France, Germany, Japan, all those places. (laughs) Um, we did have a little bit of a mini Jim Harbaugh watch, um, because obviously he did meet with the Broncos last week. Uh, Chris and I talked about that on Monday's show, you know, basically that, yeah, they came away with no deal. And it sounds like Jim Harbaugh reiterated that he wants to stay at Michigan, but he still met with them. And there were still reports out there that the Broncos felt like they could make, uh, take another swing at him. Um, In hindsight, to me, it does feel like there was the potential. and, And I don't know this for a fact, but that, the Broncos were kind of putting maybe the pressure on Sean Payton uh, mm-hmm. by saying, Hey, Jim Harbaugh is still out there. You know, he still may take it and potentially the saints saying like, Hey, we may not get a deal done here. And I know you guys want some draft picks for a guy that isn't going to be your coach either way, if you're the saints. So there's a chance that was, was playing into it. But um, nonetheless, Sean Payton is the new Denver Broncos head coach. Jim Harbaugh uh, is staying at Michigan. Uh, you would think, at least uh, not going to Denver, and uh, and I I would be shocked if there were any other developments. So that's kind of set. You, spring ball starts in three weeks. You're ready to roll, and and that's kind of uh, where we're at. Chris wrote a good column the other day talking about how Michigan should still sign him to a contract extension, get that buyout going, um, that sort of thing. And we addressed Vince Merrow on Monday as well, the Kentucky associate head coach and tight ends coach who kind of took a not-so-veiled shot at Michigan on Twitter. And, you know, we were basically saying like on one, on one side of things, Vince Merrill, like, shut up. You know, you don't have any room to talk. No one wants your head coach in the NFL and you're not doing that great of a job developing your tight ends. We kind of went into that, but we also said this negative recruiting stuff. If he's going to say that on Twitter, 
just imagine what people are saying to some of these kids when they come on a visit or when they're in a living room or when they're on the phone or when they're on Zoom, that sort of thing. So I still think that I agree with Chris. It should get wrapped up and try to get that done just so you can kind of move forward. You can at least send a message to recruits that he's going to be here, that sort of thing. And then who knows what happens this time of year next year, but you kind of got to put it behind you. I know the NCAA investigation is kind of that thing that's looming where people are saying, oh, are they going to wait until that's over? Well, that could never, that may never be over. That may be over in two years. So, and I wouldn't expect them to wait that long, but it's just kind of interesting where things are at in that respect. Nothing, you know, that you would, should be worried about short term because it doesn't look like he's going to jump ship or anything like that, but it's still something that you want to get done. I mean, why, why let it drag on? Yeah, to me, it, it feels like we've been having this conversation for a month now, which it's because we have, uh, is that if there's any, if there are no doubts that Jim Harbaugh is your head coach and that you think he deserves, you know, whatever market value is or, or you know, whatever you want this buyout to be and everyone's good with it, I don't get why you wouldn't just sign it and get it over with. And I know that there's a lot of legal stuff. There's obviously Harbaugh's representation. There's obviously athletic department considerations, all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, to me, it's like, what are, what is uh, the, the idea that they would wait for this NCA thing to blow over is unless there's something more there, which, you know, it doesn't seem like there is. Um, I don't know that there's some kind of systemic issue with the Michigan football program. Uh, you know, again, what, uh, what the allegations are, or what they are, but I don't think it speaks to some kind of rot within the, the program or the organization. So I, I don't, you know, I guess I just, I just, I guess I just don't understand what the holdup would be on something like that, especially like they just continue to let things like that linger and you open like, like you just open yourself up to that type of criticism when you do let the saga linger and you don't put pen to paper. Um, you know, I don't know where this this hubris from the Kentucky football program has come from. This isn't the first time that there have been shots from them taken down there. I know that uh, obviously uh, Steve Klinkscale came from there. Even before that, uh, Michigan has butted heads with them on the recruiting trail. Um, it is technically an SEC school, uh, but they're not a football school. And to puff your chest out and say, how could you ever send your kids there? I mean, um, I don't even know if Kentucky fills its football stadium for games. So to me, it's like that, that criticism doesn't carry any more weight than it would from, you know, Maryland or Rutgers, or obviously Kentucky's had more success than that in the sec, but you're a middle of the pack sec team at best. So, um, and I think that there, I seem to recall maybe sometime earlier in the Jim Harbaugh era, there had maybe been whispers that they were trying to pry Vince Merrill from there. Cause he is, he is a tremendous recruiter. I mean, you look at a lot of guys that Kentucky gets and they, um, they kind of uh, outkick their coverage with a lot of guys, it seems like, and, and he seems to be a part of that. But to me, it's, you know, you open yourself up to that criticism. Um, you know, we have to just call it like it is. I mean, I, I go back and, you come out of national signing day again. And um, you know, there's no reason. I know that the NIL stuff is still going on and, and there was the announcement with the Learfield partnership. And we, you know, there's another one coming soon for Michigan. It seems like, but um, when you see a school lose out on like a Nicholas Harbor, those, those guys shouldn't be South Carolina. Like really? Um, why, why shouldn't Michigan be in the mix for a guy like that? And I think that it all, it, it's all kind of a mixture of, one, that was an NIL recruitment. Two, um, you know, Michigan's, you know, the, the saga around Jim Harbaugh has, I mean, it, it hasn't been quite as damaging as last year's was in terms of the recruiting class. I mean, 2024 is off to a really good start, but all of these things kind of play into a scenario where just too many self-inflicted wounds um, and not even like gashing wounds, just paper cuts, inconveniences, things that don't have to be the way that they are. And that's kind of the Michigan way administratively. It's been the way with a lot of the Harbaugh type stuff. I just, I, again, it all comes back to the fact that if this guy is your head coach and you are committed to him moving forward, sign the deal. If, if, if all parties are in favor of it, sign the deal. I mean, it's, it feels, I don't know. It's, I don't know if there's, if there's nothing else to negotiate and everyone's cool with it, 
let's just let's just play it out or let's just let's get this thing let's get this thing signed and, and move forward yeah and to, to play devil's advocate to what we both just said as well if you're Jim Harbaugh you could say well I'm I signed a deal last year you know I'm here long term uh, another thing is Kentucky pretty irrelevant I mean they have had a little more success than Rutgers in Maryland but They've had two winning seasons over the last 10 since Vince Merrow has been there. I cited that stat the other day, too. And so it's kind of like, whatever, um, you'll move on. And then thirdly, the Nicholas Harbor thing, in hindsight, it feels like that was a recru- recruitment. They were never going to win. He signed a marketing agency back in December, it sounds like. And our EJ Holland, our fantastic recruiting reporter, has a ton of behind-the-scenes stuff uh, on that over on our message board at the Wolverine.com. So pe- if people haven't checked that out, go ahead, Anthony, but you get, yeah. go ahead and check that out. No, I just want to address that one really quick, just because uh, now that we have this kind of two years of NIL data or whatever it is in general, um, it just doesn't feel like Michigan's going to win those type of uh, marketing machine type of recruitments. Cause it's almost, okay. You know, it's nothing against Nicholas Harbor or the Josh Christophers of the world, but it seems like, with a lot of those guys who have these personalities or personal brands that are larger than life, it seems like the block M there's like a fear that that brand power will supersede their personal brand power. Um, And from a business perspective, I get that, but you know, when it comes to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to feign outrage over something like that because it just doesn't seem like they're, they're going to, I don't know that those are the type of, Again, I don't want to make it sound like a character thing or not being interested in a personality, but um, I just don't think the the pre arrival hype machine um, creation is just something that is a good fit for. I mean, we've seen it in basketball, we've seen it in football. It just doesn't yeah. really feel like they're ever really going to win those recruitments. So I would always go into those type of courtships from a fan perspective with uh, with. Uh, I guess a bit jaded or I won't say not to take it seriously, but um, I, I, that was always kind of a pipe dream. You're right. Yeah. And maybe things will change with Michigan, you know, making some progress in NIL, but I agree with you. And I don't know, you know, to me, it's, it's not about necessarily his character from what you hear, you know, he's a great kid and everything. It's more about just different sets of priorities and that's going to happen sometimes. Like he has priorities to, run track you know he wants to be you know part of the you know united states track team and run in the olympics that sort of thing he's not willing to put on weight at least early in his college career even though his ideal position may be the edge spot or on defense where he would have to Uh, also um you know nil marketing that sort of thing you know i don't think (laughs) michigan really you know wants to play that game with one individual and and kind of jeopardize what they have michigan wants to win they want to have a strong culture you need good talent to do that but i don't think you should jeopardize what you have for one kid and ultimately uh you know not that it was michigan's choice because they would have taken his commitment and they certainly put in all the work to try to get it but it's kind of one of those things that it's like you just kind of shrug at um i don't think nicholas harbour is a huge loss even though it sounds like he's a good kid and he's is obviously a a great athlete so um moving on from that basically and, and we'll see what comes of the next cycle because it seems like Michigan's doing a really good job so far in 2024. I think uh, today they're supposed to get a pretty, uh, pretty nice prospect uh, in state as well. So we'll see how that all unfolds. Um, Before we get to basketball, talk about Michigan Northwestern, Tom Brady retired uh, for good. I saw you tweet about that yesterday. Uh, I was watching a lot of videos kind of reminiscing on, on uh, Tom Brady's career. Uh, He's been my favorite athlete. Throughout my entire life, he's been in the NFL almost my entire life, which is just insane. After 23 years, seven Super Bowls, um, I'm gonna. I wrote an article yesterday, crazy Tom Brady stats and facts, and I want to read some of them off. But Anthony, your thoughts on uh, him retiring? Feels like this one's for good, as he said uh, word for word yesterday. And then also just uh, maybe your favorite memory of, uh, of watching TB12. Yeah, I think it was Tony Paul who tweeted it out, said something like, okay, this one feels like it's for real because yeah. you, can, you can kind of hear it in his voice. And you could. That was a guy who kind of, uh, I don't want to say sounded defeated, but it sounded like he was done. And, and I certainly think it was a good place to call it. Um, you know, there are two things. There are two things in sports that we have experienced. Uh, you know, my being, um, you know, I just turned 30. Clayton, you're a few years younger than that. But there are a couple things in sport that, 
I don't know will, will ever be replicated. One of them is the Red Wings making the playoffs 25 years in a row. That's insane to think about in hindsight. Yeah. Um, especially in a sport, you know, with hockey over the last 15 to 20 years has really put an emphasis on adding more parity to the sport and added a salary cap. So that's, that's insane in its own right. But I don't know that any, I mean, Tom Brady has seven Super Bowl rings and that's more than a few, you know, the winningest franchises have on their own. Uh, he's five Super Bowl MVPs. I mean, he is, um, and I know they're, there are some of the low hanging fruit, like national opinion people that say, Oh, well, you know, it's, he did this cause he played the longest. Well, yeah, that's part of it. But um, this, that sustained level of success for me a long time ago, you know, I used to, I used to get caught up in the, you know, is it, is it Montana or Brady? Is it LeBron or, or Jordan? Is it, you know, so-and-so or so, you know, I think the older I get, not that I'm an old guy at all, but I start to, uh, I start to appreciate sports more when you just watch greatness and kind of soak it in as it's taking place. And, you know, Tom Brady is a guy that uh, again, love him or hate him. There, there are Michigan fans that hated him when he played at Michigan. There are Michigan fans that didn't hate him at Michigan, but hate him in the NFL because he won so much because he was kind of this boogeyman type of creature. The fact of the matter is that he is uh it was, it was an incredible run. And, you know, he kind of, he, you know, he kind of shed the game manager label label early in his NFL career, really kind of really took off around 06, 07, 08, um, and kind of pushed himself into all time great status. I mean, he is, he is the, uh, it, it's, it's going to be interesting. I'm sure at some point we'll do some kind of look back on his Michigan career. Um, but man, oh man, like it is the most out of left field, to all-time great success story. Maybe the most out of left field all-time great success story there will be at any level of the sport. So, and uh, it's been a, uh, I, I hate to say it's, I won't say it's been a pleasure because uh, there were a couple of Super Bowls that uh, maybe you're rooting against the Patriots in, um, but you always, in the back of your head, that's uh, what an ambassador for the University of Michigan. And I don't know that the heights that he's reached uh, will ever be matched. We'll see. I mean, I think this next this this next Super Bowl they have, if, if Pat Mahomes gets number two and he's you know he's only what twenty five or twenty six, yeah, he's got a long way to go. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever see someone come close to that. Uh, just an unparalleled level of domination and success. Uh, and really, this is the first losing season he's ever had. So, what a wild, wild run it's been. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever see it again. I think Mahomes has even learned over the last couple of years how hard it is to win, including losing to Brady in one of those Super Bowls. But you're right. I mean, it's it's just crazy to to look at. And, and what you brought up, I, I haven't heard this, but you said that some people were saying, oh, it's because he did it the longest. It's like that that's kind of the point is like yeah. he was that great for that long. Like that's how you get seven. And it's just absurd. Um, I'm going to read off a couple stats. So there's just some crazy stuff. Um, one of them is that he's first in the NFL in just about every category that you could think of in both regular season and postseason, which is semi-obvious given the longevity and just how high of a level he played at. Uh, but Tom Brady beat all 32 NFL teams. He's There are three players all time to have receiving yards after turning 40. Jerry Rice, Tom Brady, and Brett Favre. Brett Favre is, has negative two, so really, you know, he, he had probably one catch for negative two, but Jerry Rice over 2,000. Um, so that must have been on, like, a Philly special, or maybe he uh, caught his own pass or something like that at one point um, over the last five years. But Tom Brady could be a Hall of Famer in three different uh, decades, essentially, of his career. Uh, in his 20s, his 30s, and his 40s. His 20s, he had over 21,000 yards, 147 touchdowns, three Super Bowls. In his 30s, he had over 40,000 yards, 309 touchdowns, two MVPs, and one Super Bowl. And in his 40s, he had over 27,000 yards, 193 touchdowns, and three Super Bowls. So he's going to get his gold jacket clearly in five years, but he could have three if you know if th those were separated. Careers. Tom Brady has 10 playoff wins over NFC teams 
six in the Super Bowl and four as a Buccaneer, uh, getting to you know, making those two runs they had and, and then losing <laughs> in the first round this year. Um, and that is second all time uh, with Aaron Rodgers tied. And Aaron Rodgers was in the NFC his entire career. Uh, 13 NFL teams have fewer playoff games than Tom Brady has won. So they've appeared in fewer than Tom Brady has won. Uh, 17.8% of all Super Bowls have included Tom Brady, 10 of 56. It's about to be 10 of 57. Um, let's see. This is a crazy one. 50.1% of his life was spent in the NFL. He had 8,292 days between his birth and the day he was drafted and 8,325 days between his draft day and his retirement. So most of his life as a 45-year-old gentleman has been spent as an NFL player. And it looks like that is over. It's day one right now, full day one of his retirement. 96 different players caught a touchdown pass from Tom Brady in the regular season. I mean, there are 96 guys out there walking around that have caught a touchdown pass from Tom Brady in the regular season. 35 different receivers in the postseason. Um, and it just goes on and on. So check out that article that we put up yesterday at the Wolverine.com. But just uh just absurd, uh, mind blowing that uh he had that sort of success. And it was a little it was definitely out of left field to turn into a six round pick or go from a six round pick to the greatest of all time. Um, but he did have a good Michigan career, 20 and five as a starter at Michigan. Uh, there was the Drew Henson stuff his final year, which I think made people question maybe, well, why were they doing that? You know, why is, what's the deal here? Because Brady was very good, but um, you know, even at Michigan, but it's kind of like, all right, what's the issue here with this guy? Um, and then uh turns out there wasn't one, but uh, yeah. So Tom Brady retires age 45, 23 NFL seasons. Um, and yeah, what a career. We'll see if he goes into the Fox broadcasting booth, Anthony. What do you think about that? I mean, it's either that or he'll take a million dollars to be Jim Harbaugh's quarterback's coach. Let's see, $37 million a year. Is or, Kirk Campbell on the hot seat already now that Brady's? Yeah, there? you know, that's you know, every time every time a Michigan great exits the game, let's let's fire up the coaching mill. You put him at quarterback's coach. You could pry Charles Woodson out of TV, I'm sure, and he can coach the defensive back. Sorry, Clink. We got to get the Michigan man in there. Um, trying to think who else. You know, it's uh, yeah. I, I know it's uh, he's he's going to TV. Braylon um, for wide receivers coach. Well, they already got Bellamy. But. Yeah. Um, I I think it's yeah. It, it, would he be the would he be, be like lead. the Tony Romo on Fox, or would he be doing like the Terry be, Bradshaw type thing? He'd be taking know. Greg Olson's job. Which I think I'm okay with. Um, Fox, the Fox broadcasts just don't feel like you know. You turn on the four o'clock game and you'd hear Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, and you're like, yeah, yeah, this is the game of the week. And I think Kevin Burkhart and Kevin Ol- or uh, uh, Greg Olson do a wonderful job. Um, it just kind of feels like it, it does doesn't feel as big as it used to. Maybe Brady helps with that, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, you um, you pay a guy thirty seven million dollars a year, he's going to be in that that top chair so yeah i think it's no offense to kevin burkhardt i think it's probably more about him uh i i have really actually enjoyed greg olson's commentary especially during the playoffs and everything we'll see they're doing the they're doing the super bowl so uh we'll see what they do i read a piece with greg olson saying yeah it's kind of the elephant in the room he's just going to do his job and, and let fox make those decisions but be interesting to see what brady wants to do after retirement he's got a lot of options he's got clothing brands all that sorts of stuff i say put them both in the booth honestly I mean, that's we've had that was thrown out there too. And Olsen said he'd be fine with that doing a three man booth. So, or I mean, CBS really should just open up the 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 piggy banks and get Tony Romo out of there. I could do without the oh, Jim. Oh, God, Jim. Oh, so (laughs) I love it actually. I'm a a Romo supporter, but I know everyone's (laughs) jumping off the bandwagon these days, but. Uh, rough last much year. giving a thumbs down in the background our producer so he's not a he's not a tony romo fan um we'll move on talk about basketball here to close things out before we do let's talk about our great sponsors prize picks um it's basketball season there isn't a better way to enjoy watching your favorite team than by playing daily fantasy with our friends at prize picks prize picks is the simplest form of real money daily fantasy sports and just pits you against the numbers at Prize Picks, you aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. 
Whether you're a fantasy sports nut or a casual fan looking to add some excitement to the games, Prize Picks is the perfect game for you. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. This includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and many, many more. It's the best way to have action on a game on the game in states like Michigan, Kentucky, Alabama, Florida, Texas, Georgia, and over 70% of the United States. Prize Picks is currently operational in over 30 states and Canada, not Ontario. You simply select two to five players and predict if they will go more or less than their prize picks projection. You can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. Uh, I'm going NBA this week. They did not have the Michigan game in there that I saw this morning. So I'm going to go with Giannis Antetokounmpo, less than 32 and a half points. They're playing the Los Angeles Clippers. And I'm going to go Kawhi Leonard for the Clippers, more than 27 and a half points. Points. That's my pick for this week. I've uh, been getting a little bit more into NBA lately. Yeah, a little more into NBA because that's kind of what's on right now. And uh, I know Michigan basketball hasn't been super entertaining, but college basketball as a whole hasn't really been doing it as much for me this year. So I have dipped a little more into the NBA. And I'm going NBA this week uh, for two, my two prize picks. I'm going with Michigan man Tim Hardaway Jr., more than 14 and a half points on Thursday night against the New Orleans Pelicans. And then Jimmy Butler, uh, Thursday night also against the New York Knicks, more than 21 and a half points. So, yeah, be locked into NBA a little bit. Uh, they don't play a lick of defense in that league, but it's far more entertaining than than what we usually watch in terms of not playing a lick of defense. So there you have it. <laughs> That's a good way to lead off the basketball talk, which we'll get to in just a second. But reminder for everybody to download the Prize Picks app or visit prizepicks.com. Sign up using the code Wolverine to get an instant 100% bonus up to $100 on your first deposit. So if you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget that's the Prize Picks app or prizepicks.com and the code Wolverine to get an instant 100% bonus. And uh, hit us up, social media. I got a message last week uh, on the Fort, our message board, talking about uh, somebody putting in their picks as well. So uh, love the discussion there. Maybe I'll follow some of those picks and uh, actually win some for (laughs) once because I've been on a little bit of a cold streak there with my prize picks. But um, thank you to our great sponsor, Michigan Basketball. uh, Northwestern tonight in Evanston, Michigan looking to get a win over Northwestern for the second time this year. Anthony, it's kind of interesting. Other than Minnesota, which was a road game, you blow them out, you win by four at home. But Michigan, this is going to be the fourth uh, time that Michigan's playing a Big Ten team twice. The two competent teams, and I know Minnesota's playing better, so no offense to them, but the two teams that are actually slated to make the NCAA tournament that Michigan has played twice are Maryland, which they blew out, and then they lose, I think, by six at Maryland, and then Penn State, which they you know win by 10 at Chrysler, and then they lose by 22, and it really could have been worse. They were down by over 30 in that second half. I know you may have turned it off, but it was bad, bad, bad. Um, so, yes, those games were home games, and then you play them on the road. That factors in. But I also feel like in each of those games, the opponent has made – some better adjustments than Michigan. And that can happen sometimes when you lose the first matchup, you're going to be looking for solutions. Whereas it felt like Michigan, um, you know, just didn't quite have maybe the right answers for those and thought the game was going to play out with a similar script, which it didn't. Um, So that's something to watch, I think. And, you know, you got to win. You got to win some of those rematches if you're going to do anything in this league, because it's a really well scouted league. Uh, you know, everybody kind of knows each other's tendencies, especially at this point in the year. And, you know, that's kind of how it goes. But Michigan wins that first meeting. And, and I do feel like this is actually a pretty decent matchup for Michigan because they're going to try to take away Hunter Dickinson like everybody's doing lately. But their aggressive defense on the perimeter, a lot of helps, a lot of switches, that sort of thing, played into Michigan ha- Michigan's hands last time. I think they hit nine threes, nine of 20. Um, you know, they were, they had some success there. The guards played really well, all three of them, Jet, Doug, and Kobe. Uh, they were hitting shots. So they they need that again. But 
for me, it's a little bit of a better matchup when they're playing out on you, which isn't the case for a lot of young guards. But instead of packing the paint and saying, hey, shoot this shot. Um, so decent matchup uh, for Michigan. And Northwestern's playing their fifth game in 11 days. I was watching that game Tuesday night against Iowa while you were traveling the globe. And, uh, you know, they ran out of gas. They got outscored by 15 points in the last 10 minutes against Iowa and, and got blown out there by 16, even though it was a close game all the way through. They're without Julian Roper off the bench, their top uh, bench player. So maybe a little tired legs for Northwestern. That's kind of looking at it from the perspective of, hey, I think Michigan – I actually did pick them to win this game. But I think they're going to have a, a shot here because of kind of those things. Well, they have to. Uh, you, you know, forget – Forget NCAA tournament resume. Forget forget all of that stuff right now. Sunday was such an embarrassing effort for them, uh, really on both ends of the floor, uh, other than Jet Howard, that you have no choice but to come out with your hair on fire in this game on Thursday night. And, you know, again, a competitive loss in this is not going to do it. Like, again, we're past that. I mean, this is a team that is two and five, over its last seven games since they started Big Ten play three and zero, you know after the after the Minnesota game, they were all sitting up at the podium, pounding their chests that you know we're five and three, we're in second place in the Big Ten, we're still right there, baby. There is a um, there is a there has been a hubris about them that they can you know just competing. Uh, you know we know we we know we're a good team because. Look at all look at all these games we've competed against these good teams against. We know we're one of the better teams in the country because of that. That's not how it works. Uh, there has been a a hubris and an ego about this team to where they think they can just stay the course and that they don't have to make any adjustments because gosh, gosh darn it, you know, uh, the water is going to find its level eventually in these games. And at some point, you, I hate to say it but you almost needed a game like that on Sunday to show, to just get, get all the crap out of your system and get back to basics and come out and play a, a good winning basketball game. And again, you look at the Ken Palm, uh, the, you know, the Ken Palm stuff, they're not projected to win this game. Uh, Ken Palm's projecting a five point loss, 32 point or 32% chance of victory, but it's one of those tier a games that, they don't have a win in any of those yet this year. So again, at this point, you just have to take it one game at a time. Um, if they could just find a way to win one game and then see if you can win two games and, you know, you get this one tonight, you've got a winnable game at Sunday at home against Ohio state. Then you play Nebraska at home next week. And then, um, you know, it's, th- it's, it's a game against Indiana at home after that. So again, you can't, you can't win two in a row until you win one. And, I'm not going to sit here and, and advocate that there's a path for this team to make the NCAA tournament. I think we're past that. I think that uh, they have, I, I think they've just let too many opportunities slip away and, and anything short of, you know, going whatever it is, math, 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 you know, eight and two down the stretch and then yeah. winning a, a couple big 10 tournament games, they're not going to the NCAA tournament. And I, I think a lot of that, blame lays at their feet for the way they performed in some of these big moments. Some of it goes back to roster construction, but even with that, they've been right there in a lot of these types of contests. And um, again, if you're going to try and sell us that the season's not over, well, you better, you better make damn sure you win this game tonight and you win that game on Sunday and really, really quite frankly, win the next three. I think to get, get some goodwill back, you win the next three and set up that Saturday uh, showdown against Indiana at Chrysler on February 11th. That's really all you can really ask for at this point, but anything less than that, then it's, it's just kind of is what it has been. And, and we're treading water here again. Yeah, this is a huge one because if you don't get this one, I feel like, and I know they're going to keep fighting and they're going to keep saying, you know, all the right things in terms of we still got a chance, you know, whatever. But to me, I'll start looking more about, all right, this is more about development. This is more about guys getting better throughout the rest of the season because there'll still be about five weeks left. And, you know, we'll just see what they can do to kind of set up for next year. And I know that's, you know, it may sound like loser talk. And I know that's not going to be the mentality inside that building. But 
for me, the, the, the chances will just be so much more slim if you lose this one. But you're right. The homestand coming up is huge because Big Ten teams, I haven't done the, the math on this, but it feels like they're doing a lot better at home this year than even usual. It's really hard to win on the road typically, but this year more than usual. And I think that is because there aren't a lot of really good teams out there. It's hard to win on the road. And, you know, it takes a good team to do it. And there just aren't a lot of those. So I think that may be playing into it. And I'll, I'll probably look into some of those numbers here in the, the next couple of days. But, um, you know, Michigan has one true road win on the entire season. It was at Minnesota on December 8th or something like that. That's it's just not going to get you in the NCAA tournament. So that has to that has to um, flip. You know, you're looking at Northwestern. Yeah, they may be a little bit tired. But this is one of the most important months for them in program history. They're trying to get to the NCAA tournament for just the second time ever and a second time under Chris Collins as well. And, you know, they're going to do whatever it takes. So it's going to be tough. Um, I think we'll see some Michigan fans probably in the crowd tonight. We'll see. And, uh, you know, that'll be kind of the way it goes. But Boo Booey uh, is playing great basketball for Northwestern, 20 points in four of his last six. Chase Audige is becoming a problem on both ends uh, in his fifth season. He had five steals against Michigan last time around. So uh, keep an eye on him. Robbie Barron played well and was taking guys off the dribble even. So while Michigan won that game, it was kind of a shootout, and that's not Northwestern style. Um, so I think Michigan was pretty fortunate to, to do that against a good defensive team. But, yeah, it's kind of one of those games where it's like Sunday was such a good opportunity to come out, play desperate. Um, you know, Penn State needed that win too. I think sometimes we lose sight of that, but this is another opportunity that I think you could you could get, and then you could say, "All right, we're coming home for three straight games. What can we, uh, what can we do?" Our stats and info department, which is Hutch, our great producer, provides a stat: the Big Ten teams are one twenty three and thirty three at home this season. So that's that's pretty good there. Um, and does that include the non conference, Hutch? It does. Okay. Um, I'd be interested to see just the Big Ten. I'm not saying look it up. Uh, I appreciate that stat. So, I mean, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to do. Northwestern though, not a tough environment, Anthony. I mean, it's let's be honest here. So, yeah, I mean, tough environment, not a tough environment. Just just play a good basketball game. I yeah. mean, that's that. It's as simple as that. I mean, play it and put an effort forth that is at least respectable. Sunday was. Mind you, I didn't watch the game. I didn't need to watch the game. You could, you saw it. It's the one game. You know, people will always say that you know the box score doesn't tell the whole story. When you look at the box score, and it says that Michigan's down forty-nine to thirty-two at the half at Penn State. That tells me all I need to know about the effort. And it's not, you know, I think Chris wrote about this. It has very little to do with the basketball gods and the ball not bouncing their way. No, defend, play better. That's all we're asking at this point. And if you just bring a respectable effort to the table um, in some of these moments, you may have a couple, a couple, a uh, couple more wins on your resume. But again, it's, it's the details. It's the basics. And, and my hope is that the silver lining coming out of that game is that it does kind of force you to take a step back and get yourself back to basics. Um you know, I remember the best effort, their best effort of the season was that game against Maryland coming off of that CMU loss, which is still, I think, by far the most embarrassing and, and inexcusable loss of the Jawan Howard era. But oh, yeah. that team came out with its hair on fire a couple of days later. And that's the type of effort I want to see tonight. Yeah, we've they've shown they can do it, right? Um, so that's, that's important. They have responded from some of these losses with good performances. And that's the thing though that is tough is effort wasn't the issue on Sunday. Like it was just, I thought it was lack of like a mental focus or mental effort maybe, or, you mm -hmm. know, just mental toughness to, because there were just so many miscommunications and just dumb mistakes or a guy like zoning out on defense. One guy in particular, who in, I will in, not a, in a lot of that. ways, that's more concerning because effort, some you can turn, I hate to say it, you can turn effort on and off. Yeah, uh, the lack of awareness, that's that's stuff that goes back to open gyms in July and August. That's mm -hmm. what's concerning to me. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see what they come out with in uh, in this game um, and kind of see where the season goes at this point. But we will uh, leave it there for today. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. 
We'll see you Monday for our live show, 6 p.m. on YouTube. Again, please like the video here, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check us out at thewolverine.com, $29.99 until football season for premium access. Get all of our Michigan football basketball recruiting updates, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos from the Wolverine, whether it be football, basketball, recruiting, live shows, and more, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for the latest.